Hey there, I've had this package for a while. It's a thing I ordered a little bit ago, more than a little bit ago, but I've not been able to open it and get into it because I've been so busy at work. And I just have had so much to do getting prepped for the new school year, but I was able to finish that with one day to spare. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Let's crack it open and let's get out shooting. I also had this device this is the Pro Media Gear L bracket for the R5. And the beautiful thing about this is it has a little bit of an extension on the L part of the bracket to where it's going to allow it to still have that full articulating screen. So I'm really getting excited about being able to use that. And so I'll, I'll be attaching that to the camera as well. But the box, what is in the box? <laughs> Well, it has Canon written on it. So I got the Canon 100 macro for the RF mount and it has some interesting new features, this SA control plus minus, and it goes to 1.4 on the macro. I have used the EF version of this lens and it was one of those things where it really rose to the top of saying, hey, this is my favorite lens to use. So stinking sharp, so beautiful to control all of the wonderful intricacies of the, the subject with how you're zooming in and, and getting really close in the macro. But it has been a long time since I've shot macro and I wanted to switch over and do some macro work because I'm just not able to travel a little bit like I, like I usually do. And this is gonna be something that's gonna be awesome to work here on the farm. And let's get these items attached to the camera and head on out and get our first shoot going with this lens. So here we are, the Canon R5, and I've got the 24 to 105 presently attached. And then just a standard item here for the mounting on the tripod. Now I used a Pro Media Gear for the 5D Mark IV that I had, and really just thought it was a brilliant little piece. They are a bit more on the expensive side of things as far as your, as far as your L brackets are concerned, but they're extremely well crafted. Let me finally get that tight in there. And I could, if I wanted to, for instance, I could loosen these items here. And then I can extend this out a little bit. Or I could totally take that off. So I'm able to extend that up if for some reason I needed it to be extended up. The other thing I like about how this is constructed, about how that thing comes forward, it's gonna provide both a handle, an idea of a handle, and it's going to just give a little more protection. I've had cameras fall off tripods before, and the L bracket saved the day. So because it's such a beefy L bracket, and it's gonna be so well built, if this thing takes a tumble, at least part of the camera is going to be a bit extra protected. And certainly, especially if this is out and about here, it might just, you know, be able to flop closed and this thing's going to take all of the, all the punishment as it tumbles. But perfect as a, as a handle, that is really sweet. So that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. Although I'm now noticing it is a little bit more difficult to reach that button to do a lens change. That's kind of annoying. This lens is a lot lighter than that zoom lens. And so as a nice little kit, very well balanced and going to be a great thing to shoot with. All right, let's load up the memory card and head on out. It's a very bright day today. And today, hey, Juno. Hey. Are you biting or scratching or something? Today my dog Juno is going to join me. So we're going to head on out and find something that's going to work for us. The other thing I like about being able to do the macro is because, well, quite frankly, there's still so much that's quite ugly out here on the farm. And so the landscaping 
is not pretty at all. And when we want to zoom in and look at all these intricate details, that's where the excitement can really come in. And it doesn't matter if the landscape is hideous. We've just got so many things that we're going to be able to zoom in on. But with it being so bright, of course, the lighting is extremely harsh. And I could have gotten up early and got out here before the sun rose and everything. But... <laughs> I suppose you can say I'm lazy, but it's going to be, I, I knew I'd be able to find something since I'm doing macro. I wasn't that concerned about being able to find something because I can go down yonder. I can work in the shade of the trees. I've got some grasses down there in the swamp area. I've got some grasses that are really what I think are going to turn out well. And there's just going to be a plethora of other things that I can find and if I need to, I'll go and photograph the chickens. You can probably hear them going, the roosters going there in the background. So we're going to pick it up in the grasses area and we'll find our first image down there. As I'm walking by, I figured I'd give you a view of the hideousness. This is our little grove of Russian olives. And it's just absolutely hideous. We want to take all of this out and it will take several years for us to finally get to that point. But I'm coming beyond this. We're almost at the grasses now. And here we are. I've worn my muck boots so I can... Ooh, look, it's showing a little bit of leg. So I can walk into the gurgly water marsh area here. And so here we've got some cattails and some other things. And just a beautiful little area here for me to explore and find what what might work here. Now certainly this is still the bright sunshiny area, but as I come up over here, closer to the edge of the property, I've got some area here where we are definitely in shade. And this is where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start hunting for something and we'll see what we can find. So what we've got going on here is a spider web and what I decided to do was kind of take an angle at it so we could hopefully emphasize the nature of the lines of the spider web but also we're going to be going with a lot of shallow depth of field so that we're going to be able to really isolate those individual strands as they lead up to this dead bug. I guess it's kind of a dead bug so it might not be something that we want to be really thinking about. Uh, so I'm going to show you this initial framing of what the camera is set up as now. We've got this grass coming in the background. Really this image I think is going to be pretty much all about background and how the subject interacts with the background. And then right now I've got that bright piece of grass coming in from behind and it's just gross. It's hideous. So I'm going to be working the frame a little bit so I'm going to be able to hopefully grab that that web, grab the bug, and have a nice pleasant background all together. Another thing I'm, I need to think about when I finally get to the point where I'm going to be shooting, I would most definitely want to be on a two second delay, or maybe even more, because there is nothing solid that the tripod is attached to. There's no solid ground here. And as I move, the, the spider web is coming over this way to this clump of grass here. And as I step and move, it's moving the spider web. So I've got a lot of things to think about. All right, that should work. All right, getting a little bit of video and camera now. So we can see we've got, there it is. Got that bug, we've got these lines. It's really coming together pretty sweet. I'm starting to think I really want to emphasize the verticalness of those lines as they go all the way up to the, the central portion there. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera to vertical and we'll see what happens. And that's going to be the beauty of this Pro Media Gear device to where I can still use my articulating screen when I'm in vertical mode, vertical position. So I grabbed another shot so we can see just the progression of where we're going with this. But I am needing to get closer and closer to it. This is where if I had a focusing rail, I could just extend the whole camera forward. Uh, but I don't have that luxury. 
and I'm trying to determine, do I just lift this up and then I get a higher angle or do I just move the whole thing? And I think I'm just gonna move the whole thing. I'm also noticing I'm getting some harsh sunlight coming through on the background. I either need to work with that to where I position it so I get rid of the harsh sunlight or I will use one of my devices that I have to shade and I will cast a shadow and everything will be fine. This is not perfectly focused, but here's another shot that is just, again, helping you tell the story of where I'm going, how I'm setting this up, and what my balance and the, the thoughts I'm thinking in my mind as I'm, as I'm balancing out this act, that grass way up at the top, I really love the gesture of that movement, but the bug is way down at the extreme bottom. I'm also at F8, so that's giving me quite a bit of depth of field. When I look at it, uh, uh, right here in camera, it's definitely not F8. It is at the F2 weight, and I love the shallow depth of field, so I'll be shifting that up too. So I still have it quite bright in the background, and I'm not convinced that this thing is going to darken it enough. So what I basically it's just a, a white on one side and gold on the other. And when I so we'll look through the camera here now. When I do this, we can see how it changes the nature of the background. So that's definitely a really good improvement. It's just not where I want it to be. I want that background to be a little bit darker. So I think I still need to shift the camera just a little bit more. All right, and I haven't achieved fine focus yet again, but here's the next one where that line is really strong. I love the strength of that line and the piece is coming off like a ladder on either side. We got the bug a little bit above center. And now let's take a look and we'll see if doing this helps at all. Oh, it does dramatically. So there's without it and there's with it. And that is, that's beautiful. So now what I need to think about is just setting up the whole idea, the whole notion of the design aspect of the image. The line at an angle like it is, is going really well. And I'm going to check level in camera here. So I am a little bit off kilter. And so I could emphasize that just a wee bit. That line, by making the camera level, it does emphasize that line just a little bit better as far as slightly more angled. But certainly I'm thinking about the background too. I no longer, I'm so close, I no longer have that swoop of the grass in the background. And I think I'm okay with that. If I were to lower the camera some more, I might... I might angle it right so I could get that swoop. But I'm going to go ahead and achieve some, some good focus. Though some wind is blowing though, so this is going to be a challenge. But I'm going to achieve some focus here and see what we can do to get this thing coming together. Yeah, with that wind blowing, this is going to be a challenge. Oh, gorgeous. And he's still alive. Oh my goodness. He's struggling. I can see exactly how he's attached and caught and for some reason unable to get himself free. One thirteenth of a second at f3.5 at 100 ISO. I'm going to bump this ISO up to about 400 so I can get a substantially faster shutter speed. The wind has blown a little bit more. With this shallow depth of field, I'm just going to probably have to take a bunch of shots here and hope for the best as it relates to where it falls into the plane of focus here. Also, his legs are blocking his eyes. So he's upside down and his legs are coming towards me. Let's get a focus on the lines themselves, the, the line that he's grasping. And so we can see the little difference. I'll zoom it in here for us so we can see exactly what I'm seeing here. And certainly with macro, this is where we just have to think about that depth of field and how shallow it is and is it still working for us. Uh, if I were to lower my angle, basically I'll be getting a butt shot. I'm not sure I want to get a butt shot. I think I'm going to go ahead and try and increase the angle. So I'm going to increase my height. Mm, the iridescence coming off of those wings. Gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to try and focus on his eyeballs. There we go. And I just also saw the spider that's responsible for all this. So I'm going to take a few shots at about F5 so I can have a little more depth of field. When I'm zoomed way in, 
There's just too much breathing because of the wind with where his exact position is, and I can't track it. Well, this one might work out. All right, now I want to see if I can get the big spider. The, 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 big, the big bug that is responsible for all of this. Oh, it's like an earthquake coming in. Ay, ay, ay. Not subtle at all. All right, I think I'll stop here and we'll pick it up in the studio after I explore the rest of this area and get a few more pictures. And then we'll just talk about them briefly once we're in the studio. Hey there, here we are in the studio and we're just taking a quick look in Lightroom. And there were a few things I did also out there. So I did a lot of focus stacking. So there's a bunch of images here and I actually figured out Canon's focus stacking stuff. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that in a separate video. So take a look uh, for, for the focus stacking to come out here in a little bit, but let's take a look and just kind of get a, a, a quick view of what we got going on here. These are the ones I've already talked about, uh, you know, I was telling you through as, as we stepped through uh, the image making process, just kind of going through grabbing that bug, which was actually still alive. Um, but yeah, it was, it was caught. And it was interesting too, when we get in nice and close, <clears throat> we can see his leg here was just, I don't know, um, it was caught in that, in that one part of the spider web. Certainly something else is going on here. This is not very uh, sharp of an image at all. Uh, I had not fully set up everything to, to be a serious shoot, a serious shot. Now this should be a lot better. So once it, once it comes in, we have such a high magnification though. There was a lot, just the, the wind doing, there's a little bit of a push this way, a little bit of a push that way. And it just took that bug right out of my, my plane of focus. And certainly as, as I was shooting, I got a lot of images. This one's a lot better. Look at the, just the, the tufts on that thing. That is so amazing. Anyway, this is why I love macro work. There's just to see the absolute beauty in these things and see the the wind just blew a little bit and so here we've got we're focused on the knees basically of the the poor little bug and there where they join maybe the hips we can call it but look at those leave those leaves <laughs> those wings too the iridescence in those wings and the puffiness that's going on here very cool stuff and I decided to focus just on the line that he was primarily caught on so that's kind of cool you can see just how shallow, incredibly shallow that depth of field is. Uh, we are looking at f3.5 on these. All right, so here's one where I shifted the camera just a little bit so I could get a little more on his face, a little more what we got going on there with his eyes. And then again, just trying to shoot a lot so I can actually get the eyes in focus, hopefully. I went through and had... Lightroom create a bunch of previews. I probably should have had it create a bunch of one-to-one -one previews so I don't have to wait for it to process. And now I went to about F5 to try and get a little more depth of field. But again, just hitting that focus point. And what I did, I hit that magnification button so it would show it to me and I could really zoom in and make sure I got that thing just tack sharp focus. But then when I hit the, the shutter button, it takes two seconds for it to then fire in that time frame, that wind just shifts ever so slightly. And since everything is really loose and all connected with all the grasses and everything like that, there's a high probability that it's going to shift out of the plane of focus. And here we are at ISO 640 as well to try and capture not only a little more depth of field with that F5.0, but keeping that that shutter speed a little bit higher too. So it hopefully will freeze. I think the shutter speed is fine. It's just that depth of field is coming in super shallow. I'm not proud of these images at all at this point. Anyway, there's just, this is me kind of breaking through and getting this, the, the, the shoot started, but there's nothing here that I'm proud of. Nothing that just says, Oh, this is awesome. Other than just saying, Hey, I love nature and I love what's happening here with all this, but yeah, nothing that I'm proud of. All right, so here's that spider that was underneath the leaf, and it turned out actually this is something he's eating. <laughs> so that came in a nice focus, and look at those little hairs, little spikes 
coming off his head. So it probably is a she, actually. Anyway, so she's eating something. Uh, what I really liked was just the, the overall scope, the overall design of those lines of the, the long blades of grass going down. And so I actually ended up doing a manually approached uh, focus stack. And so when I, when I come in here and I zoom in, I'm going to go ahead and wait for it to, there we go. And so get the uh, one-to-one again. All right. So we got lots of things in good focus here. And then it's just going to move through uh, that, that plane, those planes of focus. And so as we move through these planes of focus, the other problem is, of course, that the wind is also blowing this subject just a little bit. So you can see a little bit of a shift from frame to frame. We have a little bit of that shift of, of its position. So I'm going to have to rely, the Helicon Focus should have a function to, it does have a function to align the images. And so I just hope that it's possible to make this work. So I did this, you know, I'm, I'm shooting and then just rotating a little bit on the focus, shooting again, rotating a little bit. And so very you know, standard, I guess we could call it process for doing a focus stack. But I then went and tried the automated function of the focus stack a little bit later. Now it was after getting this shot. So let's take a look at this. I really loved this is the the spider web is backlit. And I just really loved how that was really showing up. It was just awesome. But what I didn't like, this was the initial bug I was looking at. And so this was another one that I found. I was like, hey, that, that's going to be all right. That's going to look good. And look at that, those little bits of moisture just dot, 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 dot. Oh, that's so sweet. So cool. Uh, the bug, of course, was out of focus. So let's go find one where it's in focus. And actually, I adjusted my framing because I didn't like, I still didn't like, even with the shallower to the field, did not like how this thing is just coming in there. So I adjusted my framing and got the bug on the lower area. And then of course I have all this other blobs of color and such in the background. And so let's zoom in now because one of these should have the bug in nice sharp focus, hopefully. Yeah, this one's pretty good, especially that wing, super nice sharp focus. And it looks like we have another string kind of connecting this way, a thinner string. And look how that you know is, is offset. So we definitely have another uh, another sense of something coming in, and that's what's really cool about this kind of shot too. Is the the plane of focus for these little beads here on the on the web? Very very cool. I love that. So I'm going to go ahead and and um, hit this one as a pick because that one is one that I'm starting to become proud of. This one's pretty cool. I think I can probably do something at least potentially, with this image. All right, so back here, I went back to this spider. And I have a bit of a different composition. I really like this composition a lot better. This is just a lot stronger of a composition. And it's really about, I guess, you know, we can just say this element coming up here, but the placement of the spider. And then these are the items in the background. I mean, we're F2.8. So we've just got this really shallow depth of field and then trying out F5 for a little more depth of field. And I decided, you know, this is still going to look good. Those items are still out of focus, but I get a lot more depth of the field on the body of the spider itself. So that's, that's a good trade-off. And then, again, did the focus stack. So you can see the wind is blowing this element up here in the corner. And, you know, that's, it's okay. It, it, it's still relatively still on the subject itself. So that's good. Here we have the subject itself actually kind of move. So you can see moving its legs and moving its position of its head a little bit. So what I might end up doing is grab this one. I'll hold shift here. As I select and now let's kind of go through very subtle movements. Very, very subtle movements. So I'm going to go, whoops, what happened here? Let's grab all of these, except those last two. So there's a movement there and a movement there. So let's go ahead. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to see now which one, if I can live without. 
see, this is nice because this, on this frame, this one's in focus. And then this one's in focus. So it would be nice if this would work out. But with a moving subject like that, it's just going to make this a really difficult focus stack. I guess what we can do is we can just see if if Helicon Focus is going to be able to align these still and make something useful out of it. So let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and stack these together. So it'll be a little bit of a um, something that's going to be easier to find is probably really my thinking on that. All right, then I turned my camera around almost the exact same position for the tripod. And I just found this chaos of the grasses going every which way and the shallow depth of the field and how these little beads of dew are gathered there. Just really liked how that was coming together. So not too shabby. I kind of do like that. And then went and um, did some focus stacking. Now this is where I started to play with the, uh, with the automated functions that the camera has. Now the camera has... Uh, your your opportunity, you can select how many frames it's going to do, and then you can also select your focus increment from very narrow to fairly wide, fairly drastic. The thing about that definition of narrow to drastic, you really don't know exactly what it, what it is you're talking about. What it would be nice to do is for the for the camera to be able to calculate what is your depth of field, and and maybe there's more science to this than what I'm understanding, but it would be nice for the camera to calculate your depth of field and then say, okay, here's your start point, and I'm going to focus to the next depth of field point, and then we're going to take a shot. But certainly, depth of field is something that is, it changes with how big you make your enlargement. So I can kind of get an understanding too of saying, okay, let's not even go to just depth of field, whatever our standard depth of field calculation is. Let's go from this point of our depth of field to the next t tiny increment, to the next tiny increment, even though there might be lots of overlap from frame to frame in those standard depth of field calculations. You still want lots of overlap so you can have the infinite depth of field. Now, in the final frames that I shot, there's over, uh, there's 1,028 frames uh, in this entire shoot today. The final ones, I was doing 100 shots and I did it a couple of times and so I'm going to get what will hopefully be infinite depth of field the fun part is when I get to processing that will I break helicon focus yeah we'll see all right so thanks for watching this has been a super fun time a super fun shoot where I had this extra time in my schedule and I was just so thrilled to be able to get out there and to have this shoot out here on the farm and kind of shoehorn this in before the storm hits and the storm is the quarter uh the start of school and being able to get out there and just really have a fantastic time in the morning you know it's just one of those things that really uplifts the spirit it's amazing get out there and shoot some for yourself for sure all right so do stay tuned for that video coming up here shortly where you're going to be able to see the whole nitty gritty detail of coming in and understanding that whole process on the Canon camera so we can look and see what's going on, what's involved with the focus bracketing and how does it work? How does it behave when I try and send over 100 pictures to Helicon Focus? All right, we'll catch you there. Until next time, happy shooting.